I'm standing here next to the history of Nike Air. This pack of shoes came out in 2006, and it's the first 20 years of the Nike Air Max. It includes the Air Max 1, 90, 180, 93, 95, 97, 2003, and 360 models. The most popular of these eight shoes are the four that are closest to me, and they're the ones that Nike retros over and over and over again. I want to walk you through a few different versions of these four shoes that Nike has come out with in recent years, sort of to showcase new inventions, new innovations, new uppers, really, really cool shoes. So right over here to my right, we have the Nike Air Max OG pack, and next to them, the engineered mesh pack. Over here, Air Max is made out of Hyperfuse, and then lastly, the OG tape pack, which just came out a couple of weeks ago. And let's start out here with the OG pack. So we've got the Air Max 1, 90, 95, and 97 in original colors. And these shoes were supposed to have sort of a vintage look to them. If you look at the Air Max 90, you'll notice that the midsole has this yellowing vintage look to it. And that was supposed to be the case for all of these shoes. And when you look at the Air Max 1, it's not yellow at all even though the pictures on the internet showed this shoe to be vintage. That's not actually the only way that Nike botched up this pack of shoes. If you look here, you'll see that the Air Max 1 came in an original vintage looking box. But this box wasn't even out in 1987 when the Air Max first came out. This box actually looks more like a box of shoes from the 1970s. And I think that Nike should do a better job of being consistent and also using the right kind of box with the right kind of shoe to really educate consumers of what they're buying and the history and heritage behind it. Because really this is just confusing to somebody that doesn't know. Also you'll notice over here the Air Max 95. This one says OG on the box, but there's nothing at all to make it look vintage. And perhaps that's because the midsole is black so it doesn't get that sort of yellowy tone that these other shoes can get. And then the Air Max 97, my favorite shoe of all time, it doesn't say OG on the box, even though it's a part of this OG pack, and the midsole doesn't look vintage at all, which, just for the sake of consistency, it probably should have been. Also, these 97s came out a couple days after these other shoes, which were supposed to have been released on December 31st of 2012, but Nike botched that too, and these shoes came out about a week later, and they sort of trickled out as opposed to being released all at once like they were supposed to. A couple weeks after the OG pack, Nike introduced engineered mesh to the world, and they released the same four shoes, but with these engineered mesh uppers. And engineered mesh is this new proprietary upper that's supposed to be lightweight, more breathable, very durable. Let's have a look at what it looks like with the Air Max 1. And so the engineered mesh on the upper would be loose or tight depending on if the shoe should be breathable or durable in that particular place. So up here you'll have tight woven engineered mesh for durability and then over here on the toe box it's a little more loose for breathability. Pretty cool concept. I actually think that the engineered mesh additions of these shoes are the least good looking if you will. I'll never say that they're bad looking or ugly, they are the original Air Maxes, but they're just not my favorite with this material. Here's the Air Max 90 in engineered mesh, same deal, loose mesh for breathability on the toe, tight mesh for durability on the upper over here. The Air Max 95 in engineered mesh, it's really cool when Nike introduces a new innovation and then puts it on something that we're real familiar with, like these other shoes. And then over here, the Air Max 97 with engineered mesh. It's probably actually my least favorite of all of the engineered mesh shoes, even though the 97 is my favorite of all of these Air Maxes. And then over here, let's talk Hyperfuse. So Hyperfuse is this new upper. It's actually three pieces that are molded together. The first one is synthetic, then you've got a mesh, and then you've got polyurethane, and it's all molded together to reduce the sewing on the upper of the shoe. Let me stop talking about it and just start showing it to you. Over here we have a pair of infrared Air Max 90s. These are actually the Crooked Tongue Barbecue Edition. Nike released two different editions of the Hyperfuse Infrared 90s. These were just the general release right here. The shoes look very, very similar to one another. 
It's strange that Nike released two different infrared 90 hyperfuses and they never released the original Air Max 1 in red in hyperfuse, although they did release it in blue. And it's weird for Nike to not release a shoe like that, especially when they're doing the infrared 90, the cool gray neon 95, and the metallic silver 97. You would think that over here they would have also released the original Air Max 1 with Hyperfuse in red, but they didn't do it. And it would have for sure sold out. Now let's have a look at this 95. And this shoe is super duper cool. It's actually called the No So. And when you look closely at the upper, it's just so clean and there's no sewing or stitching on these different graduated panels. The box of this shoe doesn't say Hyperfuse. It says No So. Some of the Hyperfuse shoes will be abbreviated with HYP for Hyperfuse. Some of them say Fuse for the last half of Hyperfuse. And then some of them say No So. And it's just another example of Nike sort of being confusing with the releases of all of these shoes. It would be so much easier for sneakerheads and sneaker collectors to know what they're buying if there was more consistency. And I feel like these days, a lot of sneaker consumers will go into a Nike store and if they're lucky, they'll stumble upon one of these shoes. And most people probably don't even know the differences between the OG or the engineered mesh or the Hyperfuse or the tape pack. And I feel like Nike can do a better job at differentiating these shoes. Anyway, let's look over here at the tape pack. Lastly, these shoes just released about a week or so ago really cool tape upper. It takes Hyperfuse to the next level. These shoes are supposed to be very breathable, very durable. The upper is almost all one piece with very minimal stitching on here. I really, really like the tape pack. I think they did a killer job on these shoes. Originally, these shoes were released abroad, and then we got them in the States a few weeks later. And I almost jumped on them and bought them at international retailers and then paid a premium for it. But I know that this happens all the time, that Nike will create an amazing shoe or a pack of shoes and release them in Asia first or over in Europe and then the United States. And I sort of knew that these shoes were going to come to the United States because they're so popular that they would sell out here too. And so I waited. And instead of buying them in Great British Pounds and spending an arm and a leg on them, I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning and bought them on Twitter. Actually, I only scored three of them. The fourth I had to buy on eBay. Let's check out the Tape Pack Infrared 90. Same deal with the 95s. This cool, new, breathable, durable upper minimizes the stitching. Very sleek looking shoe. I think these are awesome. I also think the 95s are awesome. This cool tape upper is just super cool. Like I said earlier, it takes the hyperfuse to the next level and really adds an element of breathability. And then the last shoe that I'll reach over, my fave one more time, the Tape Pack Air Max 97. These are awesome, same deal. The Tape Pack shoes, I think they really did a killer job on. My next favorites would be all of these hyperfuses. Engineered mesh, eh, not so much of a fan. The OG shoes are sick. I wish they would have done it right and been more consistent with them. But I bought all 16 of the shoes, so that really tells you how I feel more than anything else.